everybody. Welcome to Woo Inspired Sessions. My name is Sherry Elise and I am the co-founder of thewellnessuniverse.com and I am so excited for everybody to be here today to hang out and chat with one of the most fascinating people that I've met in a really long time. But before we dive into that, The Wellness Universe is an online platform and community of wellness practitioners who provide their resources to help assist you on your journey to becoming a happy, healthy, and whole you. And who doesn't want a happy, healthy, and whole you? More of those produce a, a happier, healthier, and whole world. So let me know who's hanging out with us today. Hello, Jenny. We got Jenny in the house. Awesome. So my special guest today, what I love to do on Woo Inspired Sessions is we love to highlight and feature our Woo World Changers, people that are changing the world, which is why they're our members and positively impacting it. And our guest today, Dr. Janet Smith Warfield, is no different. You guys stay tuned because you're going to be just as fascinated as I am. She is a word sculptress, which we'll talk about, a consciousness. Jean Houston, Carolyn Mace, just amazing, amazing people. She's an amazing woman. And without further ado, let me introduce you to Miss Janet Warfield. Dr. Janet, how are you? I'm doing just fine. Thank you, Shari. <laughs> I know, I'm a, I get a little bit excited. <laughs> Hello, everybody. So just, Dr. Janet, let's just dive right into this. Well, I'm gonna, can I call you Janet? You can call me whatever you'd like to call me. Your words, your perceptions. <laughs> Which we're going to talk about. So hello, Diana. We have, oh, we have some great people here. So talk to us before, while people are already wondering, what is a word sculptress? Sounds very divine. Oh, my gosh. Um, it actually came out of a lot of frustration. Okay. Because I was trying to use words to communicate a unifying holistic experience I had had, and they just didn't work for me. Uh, it was like trying to use a hammer to screw in a nail. The vehicle didn't work for the purpose for which I was trying to use it. And I got so frustrated with words because I was trying to use them the way we've been taught to use them, to categorize, to do linear thinking. And I was not coming from a linear place. Mm -hmm. So the tool didn't work for what I was trying to communicate. I got, I, I mean, I went from, uh, how do I talk about this? Do I talk about it in a chronological way? Uh, do I ask questions? Do I just tell stories? Do I use metaphors? Do I write poetry? Or do I just go to images? And, and I, I was so frustrated with all these different forms. The images actually, and the metaphors frequently are effective, as are stories, because um, there's nothing authoritarian about any of those techniques. And it's very important in, in some respects, it's interesting, in some respects, yes, I'm an educator. And in many other respects, I'm still a learner. There's no end to the learning process. So I don't know whether that answers your question or not, oh, but, but it, we'll it, is art. it is art for me. It is not science and it's play. And I love that. And the first time that I was able to meet you, I felt that from you. I'm a person that actually hears words as music. I don't always speak that way, but I just hear it. And, and I know when something doesn't sound exactly right. And so when I heard you speak for the first time, just in conversation, I was like, it was like listening to this beautiful song <laughs> as you spoke. But what I love, just so everybody knows, and I just have to say this, and I've already gotten permission, just like you say you're still learning yourself. Janet is 81 years old, and I say that with the utmost respect and just it, it, admire you because you're still doing so much and you're so passionate and still have so much zest for life. And I want to know, where did this come from? <laughs> came out of a lot of rage, to tell you the truth. <laughs> um, yeah. of, having, of having been treated disrespectfully frequently in a male-female context, 
uh, becoming a lawyer about age, starting to become a lawyer around age 35 as I was going through a divorce because it was pretty clear that the man I had married was not going to take care of me, so I better figure out how to take care of myself. And I went back into the job market at $1.50 an hour. This was back in the late 70s. And I can't tell you how angry I was. I mean, just full of rage. And, you know, here I was, I thought, a fairly uh, intelligent, accomplished woman doing everything right. And all of a sudden, I was thrown out hmm. into the garbage heap and at the bottom of the barrel, and I had to claw my way up again. I, but you did in like the most miraculous of ways. Um, is this before or after? Cause I want you to be able to share with people because you did have an experience, a mystical, you call it experience of that happened in your life that really shifted everything for you. Because I know, and we'll talk, we'll get into that. You say people can literally shift their lives to living a life of power, peace and prosperity. And I'm curious this experience that you had in your life, was this before or after this time that you're talking about in the 70s? It was before. Okay. However, and I didn't even know it was a mystical experience at the time, which was interesting because I was reared Unitarian, and Unitarians don't even recognize things like this. What's and a Unitarian? I'm sorry? What's a Unitarian, for those that I, may uh, um, they're They're very intellectual. They're very skeptical. Mm -hmm. In some ways, they're open-minded, but they're also, there are certain aspects of experience that they don't want to look at and they don't acknowledge. So it was interesting because I had no vocabulary with which to understand this experience. Had I been reared as a Catholic or a Buddhist or a Hindu or, or a, a, a member of the Islam community, I would have had a built-in vocabulary. To stick on this this experience, I didn't have anything. I didn't even know what it was. I just knew it was amazing. <laughs> so, can you tell everybody briefly whatever you want to share about that? Because it obviously shifted your entire life and the work that you do now. Well, it was it was the beginning shift. Mm -hmm. um, and and if people, we don't have a lot of time here, so um, I'm going to try to tell it briefly. But if anybody wants to read the whole thing, it is on my website, wordsculptures.com, under mystical experience, so you can read in more detail. But briefly, I, I had uh, three preschool children. My oldest son began wetting the bed when my youngest son was born. My oldest son, he'd been toilet trained for a while. Now, age five, all of a sudden, he starts wetting the bed. It was the last thing in the world I needed. And I went through all the uh, methodologies I'd been taught to stop this bedwetting. Nothing worked. Nothing worked. And about that time, my mother gave me a book uh, called Summerhill by an English schoolmaster, A.S. Neal. He had a really strange way of dealing with problem behavior. When a child in his school um, started throwing, uh, throwing spitballs across the room or talking loudly or disrupting the class, instead of making him stand in a corner or write a hundred times, I will be good or something like that, Neil gave the kid a penny. And I thought he did what? <laughs> that doesn't make any sense to me. That's not what I've been taught. But I was also desperate at that point. You know, a lot of where I've come, where I am now has come from really low places. Yeah, that's how most people learn though. So, so anyway, at that point, I was willing to try anything. It didn't make any sense to me, but I had a model in front of me to follow. So next morning, sure enough, the bed's wet. I don't have the foggiest idea what I'm doing. I just go to my wallet, I get a penny, I take it out, I give it to Bill. And he kind of looked at me as if, well, that's kind of strange mother behavior. What's wrong with <laughs> this morning? But he never wet the bed again. And I was blown up. I couldn't stop thinking about it. Where the, at that, and that wasn't where the mystical experience happened, but that was what started me thinking differently about how to deal with the challenges in my life.
do we have time or, or shall I just no, refer? No, you can go. Okay. Uh, yeah. Where the mystical experience happened was um, one day a man came to my door and he was angry. He was angry with me. I don't remember who he was, what he wore, anything about him. All I remember is the anger. And in the past, I might have gotten defensive. I might have said, oh, you shouldn't be angry over a little thing like that. Um, or, um, you know, I, I would have become very defensive or maybe critical of him. Mm -hmm. I didn't do any of that because I'm play. I didn't, and I didn't give him a pen either. But, but I'm playing with these. I'm playing with these ideas, and so instead of becoming defensive, I'm becoming proactive, which is interesting because I'm stepping into my power here and my choice. And I simply said, "I am so sorry. What can I do to make this right?" Again, I don't know what I'm doing. It's, mm -hmm. it's just popping into my head, and um, you know, just like that. The anger stopped, and when he left, we were friends. And as he walked away, don't ask me why thoughts pop into your mind at a particular point, but the thought that popped into my mind was a phrase I had heard as a child in Sunday school, resist not evil, but turn the other cheek. And I thought, oh my gosh, that is what that is means and that had never made any sense to me either as a child you know if somebody hits me on the right cheek question I say hit me again I get back. <laughs> it's about as much sense as giving a child a penny for wetting the bed but suddenly I understood that it was a was conduct and words that I could individually choose that shifted the whole dynamic and it was, it ended up being win, win, win. I love win, win, wins. So what, so that was your lesson for you. So speak more about words and, and creating this consciousness with them. There's so much here. I know. <laughs> uh, and, and I'm going to actually cut out things like John Grinder's ideas, first access. Now I won't cut it out. I'll just mention it briefly, which is that uh, there's certain light waves our eyes can't see there are certain sounds that our ears can't hear so we're already limited in what we have access to to work with so we're all sitting in this we can think of it as a sea of sensory data except we haven't been taught to think about it that way we have been taught ever since under christian doctrine we ate of the tree of knowledge <laughs> we have been taught to chop this sensory data up and separate it out and categorize it, which is very useful in a lot of contexts because um, we can distinguish cats from dogs and uh, people from snakes uh, and that kind of thing. And we can make all kinds of distinctions, and we do. But this is why the words don't work to communicate a unifying holistic experience because that is integrated everything comes together all the puzzle pieces fit so the the challenge it feels like a lifetime challenge i was given was how do i use analytic device of words to communicate a unifying holistic experience and it's like a zen cone you can't do it you really cannot do it however when i change one word in that sentence when I change the word facilitate, I mean communicate, to facilitate, there's a whole different energy to the question, how can I use analytic device of words to facilitate a unifying holistic experience? At that point, I'm stepping into my own power and my own freedom and my own purpose on the planet. So are you saying, which by the way, I felt that shift as soon as you said that, everything seems more doable and manageable, right? So are you saying by becoming more conscious of the ways that we use the words? Oh, absolutely. Create change in our life. There's, um, some of you may have heard the, uh, the statement by Alfred Krasinski too, who was a semant semanticist. The map is not the territory. And I like to rephrase that. The words are not the experience. A menu is not what you eat in a beautiful restaurant. 
it's it's a map that sort of points toward what you might expect to experience when you actually sit down with a meal in front of you and start tasting it. So it's it's really important to understand that distinction between the map and the experience. And the challenge we human beings have is that each one of us has our own map of this sensory data that's coming in. Each one of us chops it up in our own way and sticks words on it in our own way, which is why we constantly communicate. Now, there's something in linguistics. I hope I have that right, the term right there. If there's a distinction between linguistics and semantics. Anyway. Um, and now I, you see I went off on a tangent. <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> It will come back. <laughs> That's okay. We're talking about how using the words can create these shifts in our lives. And you were talking about the maps and experiences. Uh, yeah, and uh, and, and um, if we're if we're really clear about two things, I think one is our intention, and one is the actual experience to which our words are referring. And if we can get really clear about that and then communicate it, lots of times in first person language as this is my experience, this is the way I am seeing things, this is the way I am understanding things. We move out of self-righteousness, we get really clear on the reference and we get clear on our own intentions too. Um, let me think. Well, just two people in a car. One person's intention is to go to a ball game and the other person's intention is to go shopping. They're probably going to fight because they aren't clear about their intentions, what it is they want to do, and they're not clear about what, the, what matters to them. And, of course, what matters changes from moment to moment, too. So all this is very context-specific which is why it's really important to tune into the energy of each and every moment. And then you choose whether to speak or whether to keep your mouth shut and listen. <laughs> <laughs> and, and if you choose to speak, then you choose the words that you're going to say based on what you want to create or co-create. In this situation, I mean, do you want to do you want to fight? Well, you'll use nasty, ugly, belligerent, blaming words if you want to fight. And if you want to bring harmony into a situation, you'll probably actually do more listening to the other person. Or maybe you won't speak at all. Maybe you will just say, or you will say maybe something like, "Do you hug?" Total shift in the energy. I asked permission because one time I just went up and hugged a woman and she recoiled from me. Obviously, she wasn't in the space where she was ready for hugs. But most people will be in this, oh, this word exchange. And I can just, I mean, if I don't want to talk about it or it's, I, I think it's not resolving the issue, I'll just stop and I'll say, do you hug? And you <laughs> You know, usually it's just like, oh, yes, do you hug? Oh, my gosh. And it's kind of the end of the. You just you just you just reminded me because we're wrapping up in time. And I just want to say you, you literally just reminded me of when I was arguing with someone and we were just going on and on. And he brought me right out of it by simply going, are we done with this yet? <laughs> and, and it was and I. I suddenly thought, yes, yes, <laughs> like I want to be done with this. And what you're saying right now completely relates to that is that it's really we can be, so, become so unconscious, unconscious in our speaking and our in our and our exchanges with each other and not really thinking about the words and the energy and what it is that we want from that situation that by just saying it or not saying it or being like how you were with the gentleman who came to your door you decided not to be anger back to him. So it's such a beautiful awakening and consciousness for people. Anna says you're beyond fascinating. Donna says <laughs> hugs are awesome. Uh, God, I don't even know. Listen, well, first I wanna say to everybody, make sure that you connect with Janet. We have her link here in the comment section. She's also doing a free telesummit 
called Be On, the Telesummit's called Be the Voice of Positive Change, which I'll have her talk about in just a moment. But the reason why I'm saying all this is because you've got to connect with Janet because she is so fascinating. And this is just a bite size of the things that she teaches. And I want you to share with everybody right now, if you could just one tip, one tip to create a life of power, peace, and prosperity, something that people can do right now. One tip. <laughs> or some way of living, because they can hear you. I, I was gonna say, just stop talking and breathe for a minute and get, get in your, your present moment space. But I also have some questions that have really pulled me out of uh, funks that I've been stuck in at times. And the questions are, and this is all directed toward me personally, what do I think? What do I feel? Which brings me into my body. What's going on in my body? What do I need? And what are my choices? Hmm. And when I can answer those four questions, I'm taking my power back. And I can take the next step, whatever that is. Beautiful. Those are beautiful questions. And again, ones that we don't really often think about when we're just going through the motions in life. Right. So it's really about becoming coming back to present and asking those. Tell everyone about this telesummit. Well, I, actually, it's not my telesummit at all. It's, it's <laughs> together by a, a lovely lady I recently met, Lorna Bright. And she's actually, she's already recorded 10 different people, each, each of whom has a different expertise. And it's, go, gosh, now I didn't go back and check the details on this, but if you go to be the voice, voice of positive change. We I, posted I, the link for you. We got I, it there I in the comments. Org, but I'm not sure. Yeah, we got the date, we got the time. Just wanted to, okay. yeah. We've got all that for you. Just wanted you to tell them what you'll be doing. So what is the title of your talk? Um, or what I'm were you speaking about? I'm just trying to think how she phrased it. it. And again, I don't have that in front of me. It's it's on the website. But it, okay. it was an interesting way because it was um, something about uh, moving beyond the battle of words and using language to create the kind of world in which we live. Beautiful. So I hope everybody will join Dr. Janet there. Make sure you connect. I know you've got a best-selling book called Shift, Change Your Words, Change Your World, and they can find that on your website as well as connecting, of course, in the Wellness Universe profile. And before we leave you all, Janet, if you can have, if you were given 30 seconds to share a message with the entire world, you were given a microphone and the whole world could hear you, what would you want to share with them? I would say, love yourself, trust yourself, be good to yourself, support yourself, um, and use all the tools that are out there to do that. You can use affirmations. Um, there are all kinds of practices out there that will bring you into the core of who you are. Beautiful. And I love... We love the work that you're doing. Anna Prayer, the founder, myself, our team, we're so grateful to have you as a blue world changer. And thank you for the beautiful work you're doing in the world to shift, to shift our consciousness and to give to help us have better lives. And thank you to everybody here that has joined us. Make sure you connect with Dr. Janet. Make sure you check out thewellnessuniverse.com. We've got great content. We've got webinars. We've got amazing people doing great work. And the world needs more of this goodness and more of this conscious thinking, more of these words, uh, these, these word sculptures that our word sculptures here is helping you create. Thank you, Janet, so much. Well, thank you, Shari. And none of us does this alone. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you, everybody, so much. And we will see you all soon for the next Woo Inspired Sessions. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.